In the first frames, we see a man and his dog walking through a desolate area, contemplating bad luck. According to the man, bad luck cannot have a cause, it strikes random people and spawns a chain of misfortunes. And this man is one of the links in this endless chain. At dawn, a woman awoke in the same desert. At first she was disoriented, and then she panicked, not remembering how she got to this place. Suddenly the woman saw a man who was still unconscious. Afraid to approach him closely, the woman started calling out to him. Awakening, the man was no less shocked. He also does not remember how he ended up here and does not know who this woman is. Now they both are wondering, what is this place? But this is not the worst of the problems. It turned out that neither the man nor the woman can remember their names or their past. The man offered to go forward together, believing that sooner or later they will arrive somewhere. The woman did not support this idea, because they do not even know what lies ahead. In the end the man and woman went in opposite directions. However at some point, the man turned and caught up with the woman, who said she was going to follow the direction of the sun. Before them was a vast desert landscape. All day they continued forward, having no idea why they ended up here. Evening came, but the man and woman did not get closer to leaving this place. The tired travelers stopped for a rest. The woman made it clear that she did not want to talk or answer questions. She does not trust this man and wants to keep calm. Meanwhile, the man is trying to figure out how they ended up in this strange place. They have no idea that there is someone else here. At night when the travelers fell asleep, the man with the dog came out to them and watched for a long time. Morning came. Waking up, the travelers found that they were again in the same place they started from the day before. They have no understanding of how this happened. Meanwhile, neither the man nor the woman feel the need for food or water. The woman began to panic, demanding that the man answer who he was and how he was involved. But the man assured her that he was as much in the dark as she was. They don't know where to go now. The man suggested to the woman that they try to get along because they need to act together. They have no other choice but to go in a different direction. The woman decided she would call the man Mario. He in turn will call her Julia, as they don't remember their real names anyway. Meanwhile, the man with the dog gathered dry branches. He no longer tries to find a way out, knowing for sure there is none. The man approached the body of some person. Night fell. Mario and Julia can't sleep, afraid to wake up in the same place they started their journey in the morning. Mario thinks they might have ended up in another world, but Julia does not believe it. Julia said that she is genuinely glad that she is not alone here. Since they were very hungry and thirsty, they decided to sleep after all. At this moment, Mario remembered fragments of the past. He, Julia, and their daughter moved into a luxurious house. It seems they have everything one can only dream of. The couple are unpacking, settling into the new house. But Julia is worried that their daughter will have a hard time getting used to the new place. Suddenly Mario felt a sharp headache. This has been happening often lately, but he refuses to see a doctor, attributing these symptoms to stress. In the morning as expected, Mario and Julia woke up again in the same place. It was like a vicious circle with no way out. Julia can't hold back her tears, wondering who is doing all this to them. Mario hugged Julia, then told her about what he managed to remember. However, Julia does not believe that they were married and that they had a luxurious house. Perhaps these memories are false. Mario decided not to tell Julia about the daughter, as she started to behave hysterically. Julia suggested trying to stay awake. There's a chance that this way they won't return to the very beginning. Mario and Julia moved forward again. They don't know where the exit is, but an action in this situation is unbearable for them. Night came. As agreed, Julia and Mario did not sleep. In the morning, they continued their journey, exhausted from hunger and thirst. But despite everything, they move on. In the evening, Mario tried to make a fire, but in vain. At night it gets cold in the desert. Mario and Julia haven't slept for two days. It seems that this desert has no end. Mario begins to doubt that they will ever reach civilization. The main thing for them is not to sleep. However, Julia couldn't stand it and fell asleep. Mario almost dozed off too, but opening his eyes, he found that Julia had disappeared. She indeed woke up where they had started, and in despair began to call for Mario. But at that moment he was too far away. Mario realized that he had to sleep to reunite with Julia. That's what he did. As expected it worked, but Julia had already run away in panic looking for Mario. Next, events again take us back to the past. Mario has gone to work for a new company, where he has a bright future ahead of him. Mario is a careerist and wants to reach heights in his business. He was briefed on his new duties and shown the office. Mario was quite pleased and hurried to share the good news with his wife. Suddenly Mario felt a severe headache again. After work, Mario picked up the daughter from school. At home, the wife told him that her editor asked to hurry with submitting a new article. 
Julia feels tired. At night they couldn't sleep and admired the starry sky. The same sky is being watched by the man with the dog. Perhaps at this moment he is thinking about bad luck. In the present, Julia hasn't found Mario yet. It's sunset. Mario is trying to make a fire again, but in vain. Suddenly he saw the same man and ran after him, asking to wait. But the man disappeared as quietly as he had appeared. Mario has no idea what's going on. Finally, he managed to make a fire. In the meantime, Julia is very cold. She feels fear and loneliness. The man after all came to Mario, who was ready to run at any moment. Mario thought that this man was involved in what was happening. Without saying a word, the stranger left. Mario remembers the past again. He ignored calls from Patricia and couldn't focus at work because his head hurts so much. Patricia, his wife, keeps calling. Finally, Mario answered the call, yelled at her and asked her not to distract him from his work anymore. Patricia guessed that her husband's head was hurting again. She decided not to argue, telling him to come over when he's free. Time went by, and Mario still didn't feel relief. He decided to look up his strange symptoms on the internet and ended up even more worried. The subdirector suggested that his condition was due to overwork. Celia shared that she had barely seen her daughter in the last four years because she works constantly. The woman wondered what the point of it all was. Mario tries to distract himself from the problems and goes to a bar with his colleagues. Meanwhile at home, Patricia cannot focus on her work, thinking about the problems in their marriage. Mario came home late. Looking at his wife, he realizes that they are becoming strangers to each other. Their relationship has lost love and understanding. In the present, Patricia and Mario reunite. Hugging each other, they cried tears of happiness. They wonder what to do now. Mario still doesn't know whether his memories are just fantasies or reality. He remembers that he and Patricia decided to divorce, but maybe none of that really happened. Mario tries to make a fire again, but this time without success. Patricia also decided to try. Together they managed to do it. Patricia and Mario didn't sleep for a long time, talking about different things and trying to distract from everything that happens. It seems to them now that they had not been so unhappy in the past. Suddenly Mario noticed the man with the dog again. Patricia got worried, but Mario lied that he just imagined it. In the past, the couple's relationship becomes increasingly tense. Patricia told her husband that she doesn't mind if he wants to go to the bar with colleagues, but she's not willing to tolerate lies. Mario, whose real name is Ricardo, doesn't want to talk about his headache, but the wife thinks something should be done about it. Barely holding back tears, Ricardo said he feels he's ill. Patricia in an ultimatum-like manner forced him to make an appointment with a doctor. However, Ricardo can't bring himself to do it, fearing to find out the terrible truth. It's easier for him to pretend that everything is okay. Ricardo feels that his illness is incurable. He tries to distract himself in any way possible, but it doesn't help. Meanwhile, Patricia is working and taking care of Lucy, their daughter, on her own. The husband isn't answering her calls, drinking again with colleagues. After the party, he just sat on the dock and came home very late. Of course, the wife was very angry at him. She doesn't understand why the husband complains about his pain if he doesn't even try to solve the problem. At night, Ricardo doesn't sleep, hoping that alcohol will alleviate his symptoms. During the day, the wife no longer tries to talk to him, focusing on her duties. In the present, Patricia desperately calls for help, but of course no one responds. Ricardo suggests moving forward again, but Patricia doesn't see the point. No matter where they go, they will still return to the starting point. Ricardo admitted that new memories have returned to him, and it is very unpleasant. But Patricia doesn't hold a grudge against him, because it's all in the past. They didn't sleep at night. Ricardo remembered something again. It's becoming harder for him to cope with the headache. It's affecting his life and his work. Celia bluntly said that the management is dissatisfied with his outcome. His appointment was supposed to take the company to a new level, but he didn't live up to expectations. If this continues, Ricardo will lose his job. He came to the bar again, trying to numb the pain with alcohol, while Patricia was working. Suddenly she received a call and found out that her husband hadn't picked up their daughter from school. Patricia immediately went to get Lucy. She tried to reach her husband, but he didn't answer, continuing to drink. There were eight missed calls from Patricia. When Ricardo returned home in the middle of the night, he was met by his wife, who was furious. Ricardo started crying and showed her the results of the tomography. It turned out he has cancer. Patricia doesn't want to believe it and asks her husband for forgiveness. If she had known the truth in advance, she would not have blamed him for anything. They didn't sleep all night. Ricardo admitted that there's almost no hope. According to the doctor, the chance is very small. Patricia tried to cheer him up, saying that together they will cope. Ricardo is crying, thinking about the fact that he'll never see their daughter grow up. 
In the present he also cries, confessing to Patricia that he is terminally ill and that they have a daughter. This made Patricia panic. She started calling for Lucy. In the past, Patricia is looking for a doctor for her husband. But Ricardo doesn't want to go to the hospital and hasn't yet told his boss that he needs a vacation. Patricia reproached him for being irresponsible. She told her husband to go to the hospital right away. The same man woke up in the desert, seeing a helicopter in the sky. He ponders what it's like to start all over again when everything is over. Patricia waits for her husband outside the hospital, but he never arrives. He was also long absent at home. When Ricardo finally arrived, due to a headache attack, he didn't notice that Lucy had gotten in the way of his car. Seeing this through the window, Patricia in panic rushed there. Ricardo took a long time to comprehend what had happened. The couple urgently took Lucy to the hospital, but the doctors couldn't save her. Patricia fell into hysteria, as did Ricardo, whose fault it was. They had nothing left to do but go home. Patricia had a panic attack. She herself didn't understand how she attacked the husband, and he lost control of the car. This provoked an accident. That man was in the other car. Now he knows for sure that when the most important thing has already been lost, the own life doesn't matter. After the accident, the man was transported by helicopter to the hospital, as were Ricardo and Patricia. Meanwhile in the alternative reality, Patricia is calming her husband, who has come to realize what happened. The man is watching them. All three are in a coma. In two months at the hospital, the man was not visited by anyone. As this is a hopeless case, the doctors decided to disconnect him from life support. The doctors have no idea that at this moment he's crying over Lucy. When the life support system was disconnected, he fell. Patricia is hugging Ricardo, promising that they will find a way out. At this time, the doctors are trying to bring Patricia to consciousness. After a while, Patricia returned to the empty house and cried. Now she had lost everything that was worth living for. Perhaps it would have been better for her if she had stayed in that desert forever. By the way, that man's dog does not leave the grave, becoming a local legend.